Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. My name is Kevin, this is Dwayne, and today we're going to talk about what we look for in dyno results. So we've done another video and we're going to link it above right now on what are the differences between horsepower and torque. And so go look at that video if you have any question. What we look for are three things on dyno charts. We look at the torque curve. We look at cruising air fuel ratio. Mm -hmm. In other words, partial throttle going down the road, 35, 45, 55 miles an hour. And then we look at wide open throttle. That's when you're really accelerating stoplight to stoplight <laughs> right. or on the yep. interstate or whatever. But before we go any further, we appreciate if you guys would like, comment, and subscribe. You may proceed. <laughs> okay. The first thing we look at, the first thing we look at on a chart, and we'll just look at this one, is the torque curve. This is the torque curve. You see how it gets up there quickly. Mm -hmm. We want that torque to come online as quick as possible. So this is 2,000 RPM, and at about 2,200 RPM, it's already above 70 foot-pounds, and it goes all the way to... 82 foot-pounds at below 4,000 RPM and then it starts going down. So the torque grows very quickly and stays high as long as possible. That's what we're looking for in a dyno chart number one right. is the torque curve. Yeah, and it's worth noting that that power comes on and stays on where you're generally riding your motorcycle. Right, we, we want to look at where do most people ride. On Sportsters, they ride between 2200 RPM and 4500, maybe 5000 RPM. On a twin cam, they look, they're looking at 25 to 3000 RPM to 4000, 4500 RPM. And on an M8, you can maybe 2000 to 4500 yeah. RPM. And so we want that torque to come on early and stay up high as long as possible. That's, that's what 95% of the people mm -hmm. want. Now, people who like to race, people who like to go fast, like Devin, want to have that torque further in the higher RPM range, closer to where the 52-52 mark is and where horsepower takes over. And so they want that power to come on later. And so if we look at this chart, we look at that the power is above 90 at 2,000 RPM, but it doesn't really start climbing until about 3,000 RPM, but look how much it climbs, and it's up there really high. And so people who want power later, they want to have the engine winding out more, um, they, it moves the torque curve over to the right more into the higher RPM range. So most people are really content with the fact that Harley is more or less a tractor. You know, it can really, really pull and really get off the line and doesn't really, you know, there's not much stock to put into horsepower because it's irrelevant. You have to be up past 5,200 RPMs to even feel horsepower. And, you know, when you're at that point on a Harley, <laughs> you're doing something. Right, so people like to feel that pull. What you yep. feel pushing you back in the seat mm -hmm. Up until 5,200 is the torque, and people who ride Harleys like that feeling, so you want that torque to come on early, and you want it to stay as long as possible. Yep. Then the other thing that we look for is the air-fuel ratio, and this tells us if it's too lean, too rich, and having an AFR, there's a lot of people who have a lot of different opinions, mm -hmm. but generally an AFR during cruising is good to be between 13.9 and 14.7. 14.7 is ideal, yeah. all things being equal. Any, anywhere between 14 and 15 is where we want to see the AFR and cruising throttle. Right, so it's not just about making power, it's about making healthy power. You know, you right. don't want to be too lean or too rich you know, throughout you won't the power make band. As much power. You won't make as much, that's correct. Actually, you might make as much too lean, but you'll also overheat the engine, which will result in exactly less right. power yeah. in the long run. Exactly. Yeah. So let's look at a few charts here. You see this chart right here? This is in cruising, partial throttle, and you can see it's 
running right between 14 and 15, so that's perfect. Then we put a little more throttle to it and it starts going into open loop and it drops down to 13 and a little bit below 13. And here's another one. It's bouncing. This one's just a tad lean. It's closer to the 15 than to the 14, but it's still bouncing between 14.5 and 15, front cylinder, rear cylinder. And then as it gets more throttle, it drops down to 12. Right. Okay. So what you really want to see is somewhere in the uh, partial throttle, closed loop, you want to see somewhere in the 14 to 15 range and wide open throttle when you're really getting on it. You want to see in the 12 to 13, maybe even 11, 9, but generally the 12 to 13 range. And you hear us talking about AFR mm -hmm. and closed loop and open loop. Look up in the corner. There's a whole video we did that goes over what is closed loop, when is open loop, how do they work, why do they work the way they do, and what's important to understand about those. So watch that video. And here's another aspect that a lot of people kind of overlook. You know, horsepower doesn't help you haul weight, you know, rider weight, passenger weight, luggage weight. That's torque. That's torque that's going to move all that weight down the road. Now, weight on a Harley can vary because, you know, a lot of them are made for touring. So riding one up and riding two up loaded down with luggage, that's a vast range of weight that, you know, a, a, a bike might see. So, you know, I said in the last video, people might ask, well, what's the harm in having too much uh, horsepower? None, really, but you want to have torque. Like torque, you know, it's always better to have a little more left over than what you need. Right. And that's right. why torque, another reason why it's so much more relevant than horsepower. Right. Yeah. And if you're on the interstate doing 70 and there's something crazy going on, you want to accelerate past it. As long as you're below 5,200 RPM, which most people will mm -hmm. be on a Harley, when you get on that throttle, say at 3,000 RPM and get on it, the torque is what is going to get you past exactly those right. vehicles. So as we proceed with our future videos, it's very important to understand why we, what we look for with these testing results. And you'll notice we never tout the overall power number. We always talk about the before and after because that's the most relevant information. Right, yeah, and when we're looking at, let's say that we design a new air cleaner, mm -hmm. and when we're looking at how it performs, we're looking at, are the air fuel ratios good? And we're looking at, did this increase the torque? Did it decrease the torque? Are there flat spots? Mm -hmm. is, is Did it bring that, it on sooner and last longer? You know, right. there's a lot of aspects to it other than, you know, it, this gives the peak number. Right. Who cares what the peak number right. is? You care about what the number is in the RPM range that you're riding in. Now, this is a perfect example of why you should read between the lines because you'll see max power 78 over 75. Not that big of a number. But when you look between the lines, there's a clear winner of which has the best power band. And that's with the Thunder Torque inserts. Right. And we're looking at the torque line. Yes, the horsepower line did better with the Thunder Torque inserts in it. But you don't feel horsepower until you cross the 52-52 mark. This is where we ride. And we can see that the Thunder Torque inserts gave significantly yeah. more power uh, during during those RPMs that we ride in. Not even just more power, it gives you that beautiful arch you want to see. Right. Much less dipping in the RPM range. Right. So as always, we appreciate any and all input you guys may have on this subject matter. So please leave us a comment below. Y'all ride safe out there.